Thanks, everybody. Yeah, so my name is Greg. I'm CTO at Chainsafe. Um, and, you know, we're a dev shop, uh, R&D studio that focus on, you know, building uh, products and tools since about 2017 um, to really with a focus of trying to, like, bring, um, you know, the Web 2 developer experience back into, you know, Web 3. <laughs> I love doing this. I love doing this. Um, and so that's what we're focused on, right? We're really focused on the developer experience and trying to get people to do it. See, okay, I love this. Now you guys are engaged and I see who's actually on their phone not paying attention. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so just quick recap so you guys know, like some things we build, you know, we're maintainers of Web3.js, popular JavaScript SDK for Ethereum, Lodestar consensus client. Uh, we do consensus clients for Polkadot, Filecoin, Mina, um, and a bunch of others. And today I'm really excited to talk about kind of like what our focus is in the gaming world, um, as that's really like what kind of what's coming next, um, that we see coming next in the space. Um, and so, you know, like we've seen where the vision of like uh, things have been going on in the space since like the get go, right? Like, you know, there's a lot of us here probably share really similar values about, you know, why we're here in Web3, what Web3 is about. Um, and unfortunately, there's like a lot of people out there that really don't get that narrative, and they're like not totally understanding, you know, why we do what we do. Um, and I think a lot of people would try to go down the narrative of like data privacy, immutability, um, you know, data ownership, centralization. And I think the most, the easiest way and the best way to actually describe why we're doing what we're doing is not to tell them the narrative, but simply to actually show them. Um, and that's why we build our, we focus on building the dev tools the way we do and our products the way we do. It's like we want to show people a very easy experience uh, moving forward. Um, and, you know, that's why it's really important when building developer tools and building products in this space. It's about making sure that we build solutions that are forward looking and future proof. And that's what we have to show people is that you're building stuff that's, you know, uh, proofed for the future, that they don't have to worry about lock-in, they don't have to worry about third parties that go down, APIs that go down, and then their products are now left scrambling overnight to try and get it back up. That's why we're here, and that's what we have to show people. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And so, yeah, at, within Chainsafe, you know, Chainsafe Gaming, we're basically a, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're like a solution provider for getting people to embed Web3 into their games um, and not just NFTs, right? Um, we're focused on making sure that there's a seamless experience, that you can mint directly in game if, it's on, if it is NFT focused, that you can trade directly in game, have marketplaces embedded directly. I'm not relying on these like third party APIs that you have to then go and, you know, you're limited to exactly what they want to scope you to. And I think the most important thing is ensuring that we give people what dApps have already, which is the ability to actually build and interact with the chain on any contract that exists. So why are, there's no need to just scope out, scope out your, your game developers that are building with your tools simply because your API doesn't support it. And, you know, <clears throat> studios and such alike are looking forward and, uh, Oh, shoot, I went too far ahead. Apologies. Um, right. Ah, where did I go? There we go. Um, and so that's why we're developing these tools uh, that are, our objective is to make the seamless experience within gaming there. And, you know, gaming's really important for the next couple of years, and I think we're going to see that as we've already seen. Um, you know, the roots of blockchain and gaming have been intertwined for a very long time. Mt. Gox, you know, originally was a Magic the Gathering trading platform at the beginning, and Bitcoin got into there that way. Um, and we see it from the beginning of all games. Trading things is important to people and to the economies of games. CSGO, skins have like one of the largest mar marketplaces and it's embedded in the game, right? And that's why it's important. We're not building tools and we're building um, applications where a user has to go to OpenSea or a third party marketplace just so they can interact with your game. You have to make it that seamless experience. Wallets should just work. 
Um, and that's what we're focused on. That's what research we're doing is focused on. And I'll get into kind of what we're doing shortly. And, and you know, like the main reason is we do a lot of user interviews with people. We've collected hundreds. And like studios and developing platforms are realizing that Web3 is an inevitable part of their future if they want to stay relevant. And gaming studios alike are pushing that narrative. And they will come. And we're starting to see them come. And not just simple trading card games. We're starting to see complex FPSs come out. Um, and it's important that we give them the developer tools they need to have that seamless experience that they already have in Web2. Um, and so <clears throat> with that, the most important thing we need to also show people is that it's about building communities, not just building games. And that's like extremely important narrative. We're future-proofing for the future so that they don't have to rely on anybody. And you're also building a community. And the community is the one that will back you and bring it. And that's why you build your game the way you do. And that's why you are here. That's the ethos, right? We're here for communities, not games. Um, not just the game. So how do we actually build a better future for games? Like, what are we doing at Chainsafe? Um, that was my nice little monologue. Um, so here is a stack um, that's in the Unity world. Uh, you know, if you're used to dApps and stuff like that, you know, we've got HTML, CSS, you know, Web3.js and Ethers, um, <clears throat> and then like the underlying blockchain. In Unity, we have Unity, and there's really nothing else. There's a lot of APIs that exist. There's a lot of third-party APIs. You can plug in play get your NFTs, move on like that. Um, but you're really scoped, again, like I said before, it's like you can't get that arbitrary contract interaction, which is like a challenging piece and a lot of people need. Um, so that's what we've developed. We've developed Web3.Unity, um, native in C Sharp, and it works right in directly in your game. You download it, run it through. It's super seamless, fast. You get prefabs going for anybody that's relevant to Unity. There's like prefabs for just about anything you want to do, so you can just drag and drop, and it just works. It's exactly how it should be. There's no janky. Yeah, you know, extra steps you need to take. You don't have to rely on anybody else. You know, we maintain Web3.js, so we want to bring the same values of Web3.js to the Unity space and then build products around that to show you get, to show and empower people to, like, really build these games the correct way and not in a Web2 way. Um, obviously, some games still need servers and stuff, but, hey, BFT's on the way, and I'm sure we can get rid of that soon. Um, so this is kind of some of the main highlights that we are doing. We've got a lot of compounding things underneath it. Um, we have Web3.Unity, as I explained before. It's super simple to use, drag and drop. It's really easy. Um, we've got like built-in minting uh, services so that people can just like easily do it, and we do it the right way. It's like let's use IPFS and Filecoin. Quick retrieval on IP, quicker retrieval on IPFS. Get that backed up for years on Filecoin because why would you start on S3 if we're already going down this road? Um, similarly with marketplaces, it's like there's no need to like lock in. You ha and there's no need to have APIs interact directly with the contracts directly in your game. White label it so you can make the rules so that like game developers don't have to like pay out fees or do whatever that exists like on you know name your most popular marketplace. You know we should be able to developers should be able to just deploy really lightweight stuff to have an in-game marketplace because that's what they're used to being able to do in the Web2 world. Web2 gaming, you build a little marketplace like in CS:GO, they're not paying it out to everybody. Um, that's super valuable. Uh, Ah, I don't know how to, uh, could, could we press the button, please? Thank you. Um, this is a really short example showing you how easy it is to drag and drop like an NFT into Unity with the SDK. You just hop into a folder, you drag your asset in, and now you can pull in whatever you want into your game with a simple URL. It's like really, really simple. Um, so if anybody that uses Unity, you'll really understand why that's nice uh, versus having to like configure an API manually with calls. You've got the prefabs loaded in. Um, I need to go to the next slide. There's an awesome team of people working back there, so thank you guys. Um, quickly, I've got, I'm going to showcase like some stuff that's actually been built and deployed using the SDK, um, and that some of these have like gone really popular on like Rarible and stuff, where their collections have like shot up. It's really great to see. Um, this one's kind of like a cross. It's like a cross-chain and cross-platform, so this is really awesome because it uses multiple different EVM chains so that the users can interact together. Um, and it's got like tournament style, so you, know, you don't have to like move your stuff from one chain to another. Um, you can just interact based on the chain you're on, and it's really nice. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, like, we support Web3.Unity that supports like, WebGL. I think iOS almost works, and Android works, and you know, the whole realm of things. Um, so it's just everywhere. Um, another one that's just cool is Arsenal. Um, so it's like a, it's an FPS. Uh, the collectibles 
they use collectibles like in games, so like you get like a power up or whatever, like while you're running around. Um, that's actually like a real NFT, and it's like all done real time, um, and you know, it's like proves you got the ownership and stuff. It's really nice. It's really cool. Um, still kind of early development, but like it works. They're in beta, um, and it's in the browser, so it's fully supported in WebGL. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, Crypto Surfers, uh, which is like a really good. It's like con constantly getting updated, but it's basically like a play to earn PVP style that. Um, is built on the Kronos chain, and it just, again, like it interacts and uses it so that you know the users are collecting their tokens or whatever and earning, and it's all built on WebGL. Um, <coughs> that's my short, quick talk. I'm gonna do Q&A right now, but basically, uh, you know, yeah, let's make sure that when, you know, the next time you build games or you're looking at building tools for games, you know, ask yourself the question, is the product you're selling to somebody or the service you're giving to somebody actually gonna help them future-proof their game? Or are you just building something that just resembles what we've been doing for the last three decades? Because um, the most important thing to do is give them the tools so that they can future-proof it and give them the tools to like, build a vibrant community and not just another like, flappy bird. Um, thank you. My name's Greg, and thanks for coming to my talk. Yeah, I happily do. I've got like a few minutes. I can do like one or two Q&As probably. Um, as we can wrap it up. Hey, great talk. Uh, how much does it cost to use the SDK? Yeah, it's free. There, there's no like API on the back end. It works like Web3.js. Um, so similar to like Web3.js or Ethers, you just download it, use it. Um, yeah, it's like a public good. It's the way it should be. That was an awesome talk. Um, is there desktop platform support as well, or is that coming? Or Really good question. I want to say the only things that we don't have full support for is iOS, Android. I think there's just some build issues there. Yeah. Hey, I think the... Uh the gaming industry is where we see a lot of pessimism around Web3, especially, and I was just kind of curious what your thoughts are, like your strongest points to combat that pessimism. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it comes down to the idea of like microtransactions and like big games like Fortnite where it's just about like buying skins and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the pessimism comes also from the idea that uh, user, that people think they can like swap like one asset from one game to another when that would fundamentally break the game. That's not the point. I think the point here is, <clears throat> Um, you're giving, it's about like creating like a stronger economy and community within your game. And I think that's something that a lot of people, a lot of game devs and like AAA studios like don't value greatly is like you can actually give your community like a little bit of actual ownership to help like make it a better game. Um, you know, you see like in Jagex, for instance, uh, the creators of like RuneScape, like they just don't give a shit. Uh, the tons of people play it still, but um, it's just like, there's a strong community, there's a way to capitalize it and also like give back to that community where it doesn't like leak out of your own profits, um, which I think is super important. Hi, uh, thank you for the ch uh, talk. How does asset distribution and ownership of these assets work for the users? The, the exact same way they would work with like, uh, with a dApp. Like, you know, you're just connecting to the chain, right? So they've got wallets. If you're on mobile, you know, you can like use Wallet Connect or MetaMask and like that's how the ownership happens. Similarly in browser with WebGL, it's whatever native wallet you want to use. Yeah, it's, there's, there's no like third party. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Greg. Uh, great product. Uh, I will use ChainSafe and like really easy user experience. And I was thinking like, uh, I integrated like in-game Minter, and we see a lot of like hacks for bridges when we are doing cross-chain. What are possible hacks one could have if they have in-game blockchain integration? Um, probably it's the user onboarding issue within wallets. Like honestly, I, I feel like that's going to be the biggest barrier where, where people. I think it's just people won't understand. I, wallets aren't here. Aren't ready. Like, we're not ready for, like, mass adoption. I think that's the biggest pitfall. Um, hacks in-game, if we end up going to, like, uh, silent signing, that's probably, like, 
an area where we'll see it. Uh, we don't have that yet because of the security issues, but that's probably the biggest, like, biggest issue. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.